I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I must be myself. And I must vibrate according to the way that the almighty, all-wise God and creator and the ancestors have me vibrate. That we will stay on the path toward our spirituality. Stay on the path toward reconnecting with ourselves. Brother Bobby hit on a point. Among the many other points, other than the damn refrigerator. <laughs> he hit on some beautiful points. Other than not making up the bed. He hit on some great points. Other than how much filth and garbage is on the floor around the bed. And how him and his wife get out and wade through the garbage. Hell no, Brother Bobby. You're a brilliant man. Am I lying? This is a beautiful brother here. He's a brilliant brother. And what he gives to many of us, we must have and cannot do without it. But Brother Bobby, I must say to you that the BS must go. The BS must go. Don't tell our people that morality is not important. Don't even infer that it's not important. That before the coming of the white man we didn't have to deal with morality let's look at that before the coming of the white man we didn't have to deal with a book to give us our morality we didn't have to deal with a bible the bible comes within a six thousand year span the quran comes in a six thousand year span you think we the original man and the original woman had to wait until six thousand years ago before some prophet Muhammad or within 1400 years a prophet from Arabia came and brought us a revealed book? I beg your pardon. You think we had to wait for a Bible as it is called? He was absolutely right about these books. We didn't have to wait for these books. We didn't go in a church, he's right. We didn't go in a temple. We didn't go in a masjid. We didn't have to go to any of those places. Our every action, our every heartbeat, our every pulse beat was a prayer in harmony with the divine universal order. Come back to me. Come back to me. Come back to me. Every action, our every breath we took, our every pulse beat as we walked to the rhythm of the earth and the rhythm of the universe and the rhythm of the cosmos and the sphere in harmony with it all we didn't need a mosque didn't need no building didn't need no church no synagogue we were back to our natural selves that's what dr africa was talking about huh i'm just trying to strike a little balance because I know that the teachers who taught here meant well, but I know how we are. And then we can go and take 30 minutes of Kung Fu and come back and try to slant our eyes in the mirror. Huh? We can take 15 minutes of yoga and come back and try to join the culture completely. Go to the masjid for an hour and 15 minutes and come back home assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi barakatuhu baby and she say well what did you say assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi barakatuhu baby she say well all of that i mean and that's all positive but i'm talking about balance where you going brother Going to the toilet, inshallah. <laughs> what does inshallah mean? If it be the will of God. Got enough toilet paper in there, brother? Inshallah. <laughs> you think you're going to have a good movement, brother? And a, inshallah. Yes, if it be the will of Allah. Yes, if it be the will of God. That must be considered and factored in all that we do. And that is the purpose of purifying. Opening up, as Kiti said. 
being receptive, as Sister Audrey said, and a sense, as Brother Bobby said, and Brother Phil, and Brother Morningside. Yes, it's pos positive and important, but let's don't go crazy. You say, uh, uh, come on in, uh, yeah, sit down. Sit down, baby. Uh, sit down, boo. Uh, whatever we say. He say, you know, I, I don't want to be called boo anymore. I'm Abdul Rahim Suleiman Khalid Muhammad Ahmed the Magnificent. <laughs> she say, what? She say, nigga, you Willy Bobo. <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm just joking. The name is a beautiful name. And we ought to strive after those attributes. I'm talking about balance. You go among the Christian and the Christian runs you, drive you crazy the same way. So how you doing, sister? Praise the Lord. That's right. <laughs> Where you going, sister? Praise the Lord, I'm going to the toilet. Got enough paper in there, sister? Praise the Lord. Think you're going to have a good bowel movement, sister, and everything going to come out all right? Praise the Lord. Give the Lord praise. But have some balance. I have found since my days with the nation of Islam and no longer being in the mosque that I now draw from all of our spiritual expressions and that I now have come to as you many of you have heard me say many times while I was supreme captain or national spokesman or whatever in the nation of Islam that if it were not for Africa if it were not for the original black man and black woman there would be no Islam no Christianity no Judaism none of the world's major religions as Dr. Yosef Ben Yakin and Dr. John Henry Clark and others have taught us would be in existence if there were no original black man and woman and no Africa. They sing a song, Kano Bo. We, we, we uh, actually paraphrase it. The Kano Bo whole African spirituality. The bowl of Islam is too shallow to hold African spirituality. The bowl of Christianity is too shallow. Can no bowl hold African spirituality? The bowl of Yoruba, the Ifa, the Akan, even the bowl of ancient Kemetic teachings and the principles of Maya, truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, balance, order, and reciprocity. One of them being substituted with propriety that speaks to morality. Righteousness speaks to morality. It was not to make mockery of any of those religions when I gave those examples. And it wasn't just to make jokes. But sometimes we put truth as Brother Bobby does so beautifully, as Brother Phil does, as Brother Henry and others do. You wrap truth in laughter so that it makes it more palatable makes it easier to get down and makes it easier to internalize. Let's look at it. I said if it, I'm now coming to the point that I'm realizing that if it were not for the original black man and woman, if it were not for what is called Africa today, there would be no Islam, Christianity and Judaism, Judaism and the so-called world's religions. All of the religious leaders pray in this manner as they end. The Christian says, Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy, 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 thy kingdom come. And he goes on and on. And when he ends his prayer, he says, Amen. What does he say? Amen. The Hebrew, the rabbi, I mean, the rabbi. Right. 
when he prays, Alleluia, Kadima, Kadima, Yaumila. When he finishes, he says, Amin. What does he say? Amin. The Islamic Imam says, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Rahman Rahim. And he goes on and he goes on. And when he finishes his dua, his salat, some point of the dua, somewhere along the way, he says, I mean, he says what? I mean who? I mean Ra. I mean Ra. All of the world's major religious leaders and those who stand in front of the people to lead them in the prayer service, all of them end in Amen, in the name of the great God of our ancestors. Amen, Amen, Ra, the hidden one, the hidden one, the prime moving, creative, regenerative, and prime moving force, the hidden one, Amen, Ra, huh? You're a Muslim? Yes. But I know my roots. I know my roots. I know about Mecca, but I also know about Becca. Huh? I know about the sacred pilgrimage to a holy city called Mecca, but I know that sacred pilgrimage did, pilgrimages didn't begin until they studied the sacred pilgrimages to the holy city of Abydos in ancient Kemet. Talk back to me. Talk black to me. I know about the creation story in the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he did this and he did that and he found it and the earth was void and he separated the sun and the that. I, I know it. I, have some knowledge of that as you do. I know in the Quran it says kum fire kum. Some translated, some said shouldn't be translated. Be and it is. That he called be and it is. But I know about kunu. I know about him sitting at the potter's wheel. I understand patah. I understand nu. Shu. Ker. I understand the universe in that sense. And more and more, I am being guided to study more. I understand that through what is called in Kemet, divine authoritative utterance, through divine authoritative utterance, we were able to will it all into existence, set it in motion, and then set it to a balance, and then establish a law by which it would be running from that point on. Understand that. I've been to Mecca seven times. I don't know what dear brother Malcolm saw. And may he rest in peace. I don't know what he saw. I don't know about him coming back and teaching after he sent the postcards back, here I am in Mecca, and it's a sight to behold. Malcolm sent these postcards back to civil rights leaders, and it's a sight to behold. Here I am, sleeping on the same mat, eating from the same dish, drinking from the same cup, All right. huh? with men whose hair, and praying, with men whose hair is the blondest of blonde, did he say it? Whose skin is the whitest of white, did he say it? Whose eyes are the bluest of blue, did he say it? This proves, he said, that this can be done. He said there are men here in Mecca who would be considered white men anywhere in the world. But because they have Islam, Islam has changed them. And I believe that if the white man in America, Malcolm said, could get Islam, that Islam would change the white man. Oh, Dear Brother Malcolm, may you rest in peace and we thank you for the contribution that you made to our onward advancement and toward our upward mobility, toward freedom and, and liberation 
freedom and independence and liberation and salvation of the black nation. But I must disagree with you, Malcolm. I don't know what you saw. But I saw racism in Mecca. I saw hatred in Mecca. I'm telling you what I saw. I saw racism and hatred in Mecca so thick until you could cut it with a knife. I saw nasty, white, dirty, camel breath desert Arabs who just got a little oil a few days ago and a few millions and a few billions that don't even belong to them. I read Chancellor Williams. Chancellor Williams in his book, The Destruction of Black Civilization, say that those areas change from black to brown to white. And so we take the side with the Palestinian now. But the real land question ain't been raised yet. The real land question ain't with no Palestinian. The real land question ain't with no imposter Jew. The real land question is between them together and me and you. It's our goddamn land that they stand on today. Praise be to Allah. Change from black to brown to white. I saw old, I saw elder, I saw beautiful blue, black, purple, black, smooth skin, velvet skin elders, 70, 80, 90 years old, some of them might have been a hundred. I saw them with their wraps on, I saw them adorned, I saw them with their ithram garments on. I saw them come to make the sacred pilgrimage to Mecca and to recite the words on the road to Mecca. La Becca, La Becca, Ha Allah, Huma La Bec. La Becca, La Becca, Ha Allah, Huma La Bec. Here I come, O oh God. Here I come in thy august presence. I saw them. I saw them in the Mithar or the airport. Some of them with their little food. They didn't want to eat the devil's food. They didn't want to eat the white man's food. And many of us have to take our own food and water when we go on a journey. And I saw them with their food in the airport. And I saw these dirty, nasty, so-called Arabs run up to them. Elder woman, I saw one of them. I'd seen them pushing a few around. But this one got to me. They went to her sister. Looked like she was in her 80s or her 90s from Nigeria which is generally the biggest delegation to Hajj. And now they have placed some restrictions on the Nigerian blue-black delegation. Are you going to place restrictions on the people's religious rights? As one of the five pillars of their faith to make the sacred pilgrimage to Mecca. I saw him run over to her and snatch her up. Shake her and tell her, trying to tell her in Arabic that she couldn't have this, bring this food from the airport into the country. And I ran to him and damn near knocked him down and grabbed him and snatched him up and hung him on the wall. Like you hang a goddamn picture on the wall and held him up. I didn't speak Arabic, but I said, that's my grandmother there. Whether I know her name or not. That's my flesh and blood. That's my kith and kin. That's my grandmother. She's flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, bone of my bone, and spirit of my spirit. I say, you don't put your goddamn hands on her. And I dropped this stinky ass on the ground, on the floor of the airport. Stepped over him and went over and put my arms around her and got on the floor with her. Helped her get up. I saw our people, some of them, save all of their lives just to make the sacred pilgrimage to Mecca. I saw some of them that want to die in Mecca. They believe it's a sacred place to die. And they don't expect to be turned away or to be treated mean or cold within the sacred precinct and anywhere near what is called Haram Sharif. And so, I see them sometimes stay past the time for their ticket to leave. And they come out in the streets with bread in their thobe, with their robe, and they go among our people and take the, the, the robe and throw the bread up in the air. 
and let it hit the dirt and hit the ground. And our people scurry on the ground to pick the bread up from the dirt while these bastards are spending our oil money on a daily and consistent day, daily basis. I've seen what look like ghettos where they put us in certain sections and segregate us. Huh? In Arabic, they got names for us. Gira Gira. I guess that's nigga nigga. Some of them actually make the word obeyed into a profane word. Obeyed in a religious circle means that you are the servant of the Most High. They call us obeyed in Mecca. Some of the arrogant ones that show their arrogant arrogantness openly. They call us obeyed, which means slaves. These are slaves. And they're quick to say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am so glad you are from America and you have accepted our religion, Islam. Accepted your religion? And you tell me, Malcolm, and you tell me what you mean when you're talking about universal brotherhood. I wouldn't pass over a black man pissy drunk in the streets or a crackhead in the streets. I wouldn't pass over one of them to get to an Arab. Never would I do that. An Arab who has said, an Arab who has had the kalima, an Arab who has taken the shahada and said, Ashadu illaha illaha illallah wa ashadu ayna Muhammad abduhu rasulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's that old time religion. Or pass over a wino or a junkie that is black to get to an Arab just because he says, Assalamu alaikum. And the wino don't know how to say it. The junkie don't know how to say it. Hell no, I'm not going to pass over my people for no goddamn body. In the name of no religion, in the name of no spirituality, in the name of no discipline, in the name of nothing. Hell no. That's right. Mm. Tell the truth. That's right. Mm. You got to get up out of the dust, as the book says. Shake yourself from the dust yes, sir. and return to yourself and stop following dirty, uh, dusty, camel breath Arabs. They are not fit to be your teachers. They are not fit to be your teachers. 